The Chamber Orchestra Ensemble, A Far Cry, will explore the sounds of the universe in its upcoming concert at Jordan Hall in a partnership with the scientists from MIT to tell us about gravity are two members of the ensemble, violinist Jay Cosmos Lee and violist Sarah Darling. Uh, thank you both for being with us. So nice to be here. Thank you. Sarah, start with the word gravity and take us to the rest of this. W what's the idea here? Well, gravity brings you in. And what we're essentially doing is moving from the furthest reaches of the universe all the way in. So we're kind of, we're zooming through space at, um, it's just a little bit less than the speed of light so that we're official. And, um, and we'll end up, we'll end up sort of on planet Earth. And when we are on planet Earth, then we'll sort of take a very close look at what's here before zooming back out again. So five pieces on the program. Uh, a piece by Arvo Pert called Siloan Song. That's a piece which is based around um, the writings of a 19th century Russian mystic monk. And uh, it's sort of a beautiful place to begin, way out there in the vastness of space slash human consciousness. Um, then we go to a piece by Xenakis called Aurora. And um, Aurora actually is Greek for Earth. But this piece is full of, gosh, it's full of kind of potentially violent sounds. You can kind of imagine like hurtling through an asteroid belt. There's the sounds of the wood of our bows kind of clicking on the strings. There's glissandi going around corners. And, and the entire time you're just, you're sort of confronting the, um, the incredible power that, um, that you have when you're playing with sounds. Um, so we're coming in, we're coming in, we're coming in. And the next piece is um, Musica Celestis by Aaron J. Kernis. And this is um, a gorgeous piece which is um, inspired in part by chants by Hildegard von Bingen. And he sort of really thought, well, you know, what, would it, what does it sound like? What does it sound like when the angels are singing? And so now we're kind of coming through the atmosphere um, and thinking about sort of our sense of wonder as we look up and sort of dream about what's up there. Well, so a lot of ties between Hildegard von Bingen, she was a medieval composer, and Abel Perret, this sort of monastic kind of music. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I think what both of them have in common, and not just them, is this sort of ecstatic ability to, um, to, to look beyond, you know, beyond what we see in the everyday, really to sort of like look up at the sky and then to sort of keep looking up or to sort of examine something with an article of faith and then just let that faith sort of transform you. Jay, uh, what's it like for you uh, at the other end of the spectrum here with the piece by Zanaki? A lot of people say, that should be called entropy or something. It's, it's like it's all kinds of disorder. I think of it as, as somewhere um, a sonic description that entails between the Millennium Falcon and just putting in putting a, a a microphone outside of the space station. So you have distortion and complete chaos, and then you have order, as if as if you're actually looking out into the solar system, but also knowing that it's just a tiny speck of something. I, it, I, I, it has, it has the kind of bewilderment and wonder that you don't, you wouldn't find in any other piece piece that we'll be performing that night. I think the juxtapose that it brings to the program is quite wonderful. Now, now you, I know you make it sound almost mechanical, but I can also imagine being in a rehearsal. Uh, doing a piece like this, or mm -hmm. doing one of the Ligeti's quartets. Sure. And you're all looking at each other while you're making these noises. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what's that like? Um, it, it actually is a quite choreographed uh, affair, because the way the music is written, people are usually paired up. Um, the violins have to either slide all together, or, or we're literally 16th notes apart in terms of where we go up and down and how we start distorting the sound. So it's, even though away from the score, it should sound completely um, by chance, but everything is, it has to be really precise in order for it to really, really work. 
This is being the news, and we're talking with Jay Cosmos Lee and Sarah Darling from Far Cry. Sarah, the, the most down to earth piece here is by Baylor Bartok, and it's a string piece, but there are parts where you don't know whether it's a concerto brother from the Baroque era or if he's doing Hungarian country music. Yes, in a word. <laughs> um, his Tavridimento is, I mean, I think it's just one of the most brilliant and wonderful and sort of and sort of sad pieces that he ever wrote. Because especially in the outer movements, um, you get the sense that the, you know, that the music that he spent so much of his life sort of feeling close to and gathering painstaking recordings of um, is just right there. You can sort of feel it. And then there are moments when he'll sort of zoom out from it. I feel like almost in every Bartok piece I know, there's a moment of sort of almost melancholic sweetness. And you usually get it right before the end of a movement. You're going along, you're going along, and then suddenly, oh, and then back. And I, and I feel so that's Bartok just saying like, hey guys, let's just think about this. But then the middle movement of the, of the divertimento is totally different. So he's writing this piece, um, it's commission um, from Paul Zacher, and he's writing it sort of in the throes of, um, of the Second World War, and it's like you can hear things approaching. You can sort of hear that, that you know, that this music and this sort of life that Bartok loved so passionately, that there is something sort of relentlessly mechanical on the Second Movement that's just threatening it. Yep, he was very distressed about the rise of fascism in Hungary. And Jay, finally, uh, the last piece here by Oswaldo Galihov. Um, interesting backstory here because part of this was about an experience in Israel in part when he's taking his kid to a planetarium. That's right. Um, the first part of it is, is his turmoil with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and, and how that's been conflicting him. And then he goes through the journey and then he puts a backstory to it that he goes to, to the planetarium um, with his son and seeing the earth as a little pale blue dot and realizing that, you know, even though all the conflict and sorrow that we might have on the surface might, might feel like it's the biggest worry on earth, but as we all zoom out, we're all just little specks in the space and more, you know, more, more or less uh, conveying that we're all in this together. But from, from the point of view of us feeling like you know, all this internal, internal turmoil is really nothing compared to the, to the bigger picture. So finally, uh, of course, the, the greatest thing is to hear this and, and you've got the concert at Jordan Hall. And there's also a preview mm -hmm. before then that's open to the public? There's actually, there will be a preview at the Harbor Dead portal, but I'm going to make a plug for our postlude instead, which is um, on Sunday. And when, uh, when we do this, um, this extra performance in JP on Sunday, uh, St. John's Church, we'll be actually able to speak with Aaron J. Kernis, who's going to be able to come up. And so what we're going to do is sort of do a deep dive into Musica Celestis. He'll be able to, he'll be able to kind of take it apart and just tell us more about putting it together and kind of what he was thinking. And then we'll also be doing the Goliath in that show. So I think, I think that'll be a nice chance for anybody who's coming on Friday if they want to sort of really just slide on in and find out more. And you've got a website or a Facebook page people can check out? www.afarcry.org. Thank you both very much, Sarah Darling and Jay Cosmos Lee from The Far Cry.